Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash petty revenge. In today's episode, he needed to learn to be afraid of women. My foul-smelling roommate threw a coupon book at me so I moved out and froze the room. Gave my kid a birthday party out of spite. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. He needed to learn to be afraid of women. I used to go to a certain 24-hour gas station close to my house around 3 or 4 a.m. regularly because that's when I got off work and not much else was open. It was usually the same guy working. He was always friendly but not really creepy seeming. One night I was just getting some honey and he said don't worry about paying. It was odd, but I figured maybe he already counted his drawer or was mad at his boss. Whatever. Then he said hold on I want to show you something and started walking toward the back. I followed him. Not nervous, but I prefer a good amount of personal space so I stayed about 4 to 5 feet behind him. He opened the door to the back room and I could see from where I was that it was just a stockroom and it was mostly empty so when stepped in the doorway and motioned for me to follow I stopped and asked what he wanted to show me. Dude lunged at me, grabbed my arm and tried to yank me into the room. Fortunately for me I am really strong, a lot stronger than I look, and I grabbed him back yanked him away from the room toward the cameras and kinda threw him into the wall. I said thanks for the honey and I left. First I was mad, then I was depressed about it. I thought about calling the cops, but in the place I live they didn't even show up for gunshots half the time. I thought about calling his boss, but he had been there for years and a lot of times these things don't get taken seriously. I didn't know what I was gonna do, but the next day I went in with my phone, clearly videotaping him and when he saw me he smiled. He liked that I had him on video and called me honey and flexed his muscles for the camera. WTF? He literally just thought what he did was cool until I started talking and I let him know in no uncertain terms that I was angry. His response was a nervous oh are you gonna get your boyfriend to come do something to me? That made me even more mad. Like why wasn't he afraid of me? He already knows I'm stronger than him. But he had such little regard for women that he thinks what he did was okay and the only thing to worry about is if I got a man involved. The more I thought about the more I started to worry about other women to cross his path. Not all women are as strong as I am and somebody else may have wound up in that back room. I thought he needed to learn that a woman can be scary and not feel so comfortable just casually assaulting us. I didn't want to hit him and go to jail so I made a plan, and it was a fun one. I kept going in at random intervals. Sometimes multiple days in a row. Sometimes not for weeks. Sometimes after work, sometimes after a performance, dressed in any kind of mask or strange dirty sweaty clothes I had worn on stage. Every time was a new demented scenario. The fir first time I put a handful of coins in my mouth. Yeah it's gross but worth it, it was well over the amount that honey cost. I walked in staring at him with a blank look on my face and grabbed a honey, never breaking eye contact. He was not happy to see me this time. He was on the phone and I walked toward the counter but stayed about 10 feet away and just stared. He tried to wave me to the register and cash me out while he was on the phone. He really didn't want to interact with me and my dead stare started to creep him out pretty quickly. It took about 5 minutes for him to get off the phone. He was weirded out by this time, but he couldn't really call the cops or do anything because I had him on video admitting to assaulting me. I held my ground and my stare. It was so hard not to smile as he got more and more nervous, but I held on for about 10 solid minutes then slowly walked up to the counter and opened my mouth, just let all the coins just fall out. I stared blankly for another few seconds and walked out with my honey. Every time was something equally crazy. Once I just kept opening candy at the counter taking one bite then dropping it and saying it doesn't taste good. Why doesn't it taste good? I need it to taste good. Then I left a 20 in the counter and walked out. I'm not a thief. 
One time I just cheerfully sang a cramp song and rearranged an entire aisle. Every time he tried to tell me to stop by death glared him and sang louder. I visited him often for around six months. Sometimes I would act like he was my best friend and just hang out at the counter telling him random nonsensical stories. Sometimes I would act like I was so heartbroken and sad about like the donut display or something. But I never ever let him speak. I would change my expression to a murder stare and keep talking but make my voice very loud and firm until he shut up. Eventually he developed a twitch and I could tell he was truly miserable so I felt done. My boyfriend really wanted to see this dude so I brought him in for one last visit. Did a whole introduction like we were buddies. We both leaned on the counter drinking soda and eating candy for about 30 minutes. It was earlier than usual do a few other people were in and out. We were so cheerful. I, I told him that I felt like he didn't like me as much as he used to. I told my boyfriend in front of him he used to like me a lot. He liked me so much he tried to drag me into that back room over there. You gotta really like someone to do that I asked him why he didn't like me as much as he used to. Told him I felt like I have been a really good friend. I even come to see him all the time. I even eat candy that doesn't taste good and help arrange shelves and sing him songs. I acted so hurt. So my boyfriend acted really offended and asked him why he doesn't like me as much. He knew better than to speak by now so it was a real deer in the headlights scenario. As we were leaving I said oh, I have a present for you but I forgot it. It's okay, I'll just bring it to your house. Don't worry I wasn't following you or anything, I was just driving behind you and watching where you go. Bye. Then I never went back. I don't have any way of knowing if it worked but my hope is that next time this POS wants to put his hands on a woman that doesn't want it, he remembers the six months of hell the last one. Edit, please y'all. I didn't post this in a please tell me what I did wrong even though I am perfectly happy with how I handled things thread. I already did this the way I did this. At this point I am just sharing a funny story about what I did and why I did it. Yes, if he would have succeeded in his attempt I would have called the police, but an alleged arm grab in an off-camera area of a gas station is not a big priority in a high crime area already well known for non-responsive police. It would have just validated his opinion that he did nothing wrong and done more harm than good. My foul-smelling roommate threw a coupon book at me so I moved out and froze the room. I've seen a number of bad roommate situations on this sub today so I figured I'd add my story. I, I had a roommate that was loud all hours of the night. He'd slam caffeine like his life depended on it and would scream at his video games until the sun rose. The stench of his unwashed body and unlaundered clothes stunk up the whole unit and hallway beyond it. You'd have thought something crawled into the ceiling and died. It is surprisingly difficult to put into words just how bad this man smelled. Imagine the scent of spoiled milk combined with a dead skunk. To make things worse, if I was away for the weekend he'd invite over his drug-addicted friend who'd sleep in my bed and leave the covers undone. Despite all my attempts to communicate my displeasure I knew there was no salvaging this shitstorm of a living situation. At one point he threw a coupon book at my head while I was sleeping. He claimed I was snoring and he didn't want to walk across the room to wake me up. I talked to the RA, this was a college dorm and was able to move to a different dorm across the campus. Without telling my roommate, I moved out one evening while he was away at classes. I didn't tell him I was moving out. That man returned to his dorm room to find it devoid of everything except his foul odor, his messy stuff, and two windows glued open in minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit weather. Later I found out from a former neighbor that he'd been confused by my disappearance and told everyone we were such good roommates, I don't know why he left. Liar. Gave my kid a birthday party out of spite. Our, our daughter was born a couple days before MIL's birthday. My original due date was MIL's birthday, but I had to be induced early so I was able to pick her day. Sharing birthdays suck and especially if it's with a woman who doesn't respect you as an adult and boundaries. 
It was 2019 and MIL found out that she had another grandchild. BIL found out through a paternity test that the girl he denied was his was actually his. MIL backed her son up and once the paternity test was positive oh. I have another granddaughter. Let's all celebrate my birthday at Disney. The plan was renting a hotel room and all the grandkids visit which was our daughter, my niece, BAL and his new GF and her daughter and my husband and myself. We had to pay for our daughter and us. I didn't think it was right we would have to pay for us when our daughter's birthday was basically the same weekend and I'd been to Disney with her. She sucks all the fun out with her complaining. Our daughter really wanted a party. She was turning nine. And she has lots of friends. I didn't want to do a party because of the planning. But because MIL was pushing us to go to Disney to celebrate her birthday, I told daughter, hey, how would you like that party? I planned it right when MIL planned her getaway. And when MIL pushed I said so sorry, we have our daughter's birthday party then. I printed about 20 invites from Walgreens for the party to be held at the local park. I let my daughter hand them out at the school trunk or treat. She invited about 17 kids. I then let daughter pick the menu and decorations and daughter had her party while MIL had hers. My daughter had the best time and I didn't have to deal with the drama of MIL and even BIL. And the cost was probably cheaper than all of us going to Disney. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.